All right, we bring in former California Congressman Daryl Issa, former member of the Foreign Relations Affairs Committee. Good to see you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, we entering a new phase here of the president's foreign policy when you start talking about war plans with Iran? No, just the opposite. What you have is what commanders in chief have done and must do, which is either their Department of Defense asks these questions and periodically briefs them on we have scenarios, or the president asks are there, directly or indirectly, are there methods we could use? If you don't ask that question of is there a military option, you haven't done your job as the commander in chief. And the Department of Defense runs these scenarios regularly. This brings up an important broader point as Rich is traveling with Secretary Pompeo. He's, he is going through the Middle East. Some have called it an apology to her because of the Syria decision to some of these key allies like Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Some have said it's an explanation to her. Whatever it is, it's got to be a reassurance to her. This news coming out at the same time you're in the Saudi capital, hard to imagine that's a coincidence. Well, look, the Saudis have done, have asked themselves, is there a military solution? Uh, and of course, there really isn't for Saudi Arabia. But the United States does have to ask that. And just give you an well, example. But for, you know, you, you could argue Saudi Arabia is already at war with Iran, bombing Yemen and the rebels they support. There's so. a proxy war in Yemen. Uh, but during the Bush, the Bush W. Bush administration, uh, Israel was forced to bomb a nuclear facility in northeastern Syria. Yeah. And they had to make a decision about whether or not they could do something they'd never done before, which was do that type of an overflight uh, and successfully take out what was, in fact, a purely weapons production nuclear facility. Uh, there's no question in anyone's mind that the United States knew about it that they had to run the scenario of, does the United States bomb them? Does Israel bomb right. them? Do we let them bomb I spent, them? I spent, a lot of, I spent a lot of weeks in Jerusalem waiting for such an attack that never, that never happened. It brings up this important question, though. Does our allies in the Middle East believe that the president is going to back up these harsh words and tough words about Iran? The president has to live up to an obligation that President Clinton, Bush, Obama all made, and that was we were not going to allow a nuclear Iran. Now, most people believe that it would be difficult to actually use military force to eliminate their nuclear capability, but no one believes that if you take nuclear, uh, if you take uh, military action off, that somehow oh. Iran's going to do it just because they've become nice. So you've well, got to have know, that. And we know that John Bolton, uh, now national security advisor, a long time argued for regime change for a long time. He wrote an op-ed saying we needed to bomb Iran. Move you now to the topic of the government shutdown. You left Congress in the middle of a shutdown. Um, and we're talking, we talked about this. This is, a, in your words, this is a shutdown over principle. Uh, which makes it harder for both sides to compromise, which somehow has become a dirty word uh, in Washington. Well, and the president is in an odd situation. He has expressed a principle that the Democratic leadership has already voted for. He has said repeatedly, and sometimes gets chastised, I'll, I'll, I'll compromise on everything else, on DACA, on, uh, on money for this or that, but I won't compromise on a principle that you both, Nancy Pelosi Did, and Chuck Schumer, already voted for. Real quickly, Chris Coons uh, was on Fox News Sunday, and he talked about this concept that it's sometimes difficult to negotiate with the president because he changes his mind. You know, it, 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 ahead of this shutdown, uh, there was a deal on the table that appeared to be made to keep the government open and keep negotiating, and then the president took a lot of flack and he pulled that back. Fair argument? No, not really. Uh, the president, uh, as late as Saturday, while I was still a member, sent the vice president with a compromise that was unbelievable. He would take 2.1 billion, about se uh, s about 700 million more than he already had, and reopen the government. And Chuck Sch Schumer said we were very far apart. Yeah. Now, when 700 million dollars is very par far apart in Washington, <laughs> and by the way, that's about two days of the pay for the people who will be paid right. who are not working. Um, it's very clear, like you said, the president changes, but he changes what he's willing to do to get to a principle he believes in that the Democrats have said they believe in, but somehow won't compromise to get done. All right, Congressman. Appreciate it. Good luck and Godspeed in your new endeavors. Meantime, enjoy a little time back home. I will. We know there were a lot of long commutes.